Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, put the bottom of this tank on. Got my trusty Tessers tube glue here. Again, perfect situation for this. Just run a bead right there around the outside. Just a lip. there <clears throat> and the good thing about this is there is in fact a locating pin right there so you can put it on the fuel tank correctly it doesn't matter which side again these two halves are identical so just actually it does matter now that I think about it because the hardware for the shuttle is going to be on this side which means I'd better go check and see. I'll be back. Okay, as can be seen here, the plumbing runs up the same side of the tank uh, as the attachment points for the shuttle itself. So, armed with that knowledge, we can actually put this on the correct side, which is going to be this one. And so I'm looking for a, a strong um, weld here, and this is a product called Plastark, which I'm sure many modelers are familiar with. And this gives you a very, very strong weld. So we're going to use this and go right around the edge of this. Now, unlike 10X, uh, this can damage the finish of your model. If you were building something that had fine detail here, I would not be using this on the outside. But um, we're going to be um, working, puttying here, and uh, covering most of this up anyway. So this is fine. This is perfect. <clears throat> squeeze on here and we'll let it sit for a while and come back and buddy it up all right so um, we have the bottom of the tank uh, taped off for some putty and so we're gonna do a, a couple things here take my handy squadron and apply it on either side of the painter's tape. This is just a simple painter's tape you get at any hardware store. Just goes by the name Blue Painter's Tape. And it just is a way of, of keeping you from putting on too much putty because the more you put on, the more you have to sand off. <clears throat> and uh, it also helps you from keeps you from destroying surface detail on the plastic although it's not going to really matter for us here since a lot of the stuff's going to be sanded down keep in mind out there um, putty shrinks um, and you know don't be impatient it's um it's sometimes necessary to put on more than one putty application so for those of you who you know complain about putty shrinking and and whatnot, um, you know, give them a little bit of slack. Sometimes it just takes a couple, couple applications. All right, so we've got that done. Uh, I'll need to let that dry. Um, but I've got another little issue here I need to deal with, and that is, what do I do about getting putty into these seams? Hmm. 
it's a little bit of a different situation. Now I really can't reach in there with a putty knife so easily, so we have to come up with another method. And of course we have one. Uh, this is nothing more than squadron white putty uh, thinned out with uh, acetone and mixed up in a, in a paste. And I have this, I have squadron green, and it comes in handy sometimes. I always um, use some cellophane here, double layered, because even though you may have the tops on, on here, this stuff will dry out. If it dries out, then it's toast, and you can't bring it back to life. So, two layers of cellophane on top. Uh, it'll separate. I've already mixed this um, a few minutes earlier, but it will separate on you. So, uh, just expect that. If it sits there for a while, you're going to have a layer of acetone on top. Just stick a toothpick back in here. You know, get it get it mixed really good okay and um, then just grab your, your paintbrush the appropriate size and put some putty on the end of it and just go ahead and get in there where you need to get have a lot better control with this than you do with a putty knife. Now getting back in here and sanding it, that's going to be an adventure in itself. Um, but we will manage, I assure you. Again, this might take a couple applications also. <clears throat> Now you may have difficulty seeing this because it's white, it's on a white background, and uh, you have you have to kind of like um, you know, pick your battles here. I would love to use green putty on this, and um, it's just that I know that it's going to be more difficult to cover. Okay, done. Just wash out your your um, brush and some thac lacquer thinner, and you're good to go. Till next time. All right, so um, this putty work is done, and it's dried overnight. And we're going to go ahead and and take this tape off. You can actually remove the tape um, before it's completely dry. Sometimes it's even better because if you let it dry like I did in this case, uh, sometimes it'll pull the putty um, off of where you want it to stay. And that's not good. As I said before, uh, this has a solvent in it called toluene, uh, which uh, helps it adhere to the plastic. So you can see there that uh, instead of having a whole lot of putty, we now have just a small uh, area that we have to worry about getting rid of. You can also see pretty clearly this texture. And um, I like this texture. I would go ahead and leave it even though I'm not sure it's completely accurate. It still looks nice. I would leave it except for the fact that we already talked about how we destroyed a lot of it uh, here. So I think that um, just to make things consistent we're going to end up sanding down this whole tank. Now the key to doing this and not making a real mess is to do it do it wet. Uh, use sandpaper that is, uh, is wet, that way you don't have a problem with dust, and it's no no big deal. Now, before you get rolling with the sandpaper, a lot of times it's best to um, come along and, and knock off the rough edges of the file, like so. Just makes it a little bit easier for you. Saves you, I don't know if it saves you any time really, just, just makes it a little bit easier. And uh, I do have some putty in there, but I'll deal with that later. That takes a little bit more attention to detail. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and stand. This is 150 grit paper. This is really, really, really pretty much more than this is a 
pressure grade than I would ever use in, in most situations except for this. But we have to take a lot off here, so I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. We're going to start it here. And this is not, this is not going to be an easy job. Well, it's not really hard, but it's just going to take a while. All right, so while we're sanding away on this tank, uh, we still have a ways to go. Um, it gives us an opportunity to talk about the various ways you can sand on a model. Um, first, of course, is a tried and true uh, paper, sandpaper film method. This has been around forever. It's basically a grid attached to a, a plastic film backing, which makes it waterproof. And uh, if you use this in the wet manner that I've described, it um, you know, works pretty good. Um, but if you use it in some tight situations, it's sometimes difficult to, to get in. Um, the next thing I remember using is something called a flexi file. And that's what this looks like. Again, most uh, modelers have seen this. If you're new, this could be brand new to you. Whoever came up with this, this outfit flexi file, uh, they're pretty smart because this allows you to get into lots of tight little areas that you wouldn't be able to get into with a regular old sandpaper great tool. I've had one for gosh 20, 20 or so years. Um, the company I think was um, purchased by Creations Unlimited uh, or may, that might have been actually the original name of the company I'm not sure but I know since then they've been uh, purchased again by an outfit called Alpha Braces out of Canada uh, which puts out uh, obviously because of their name different embrace of products. Next thing I want to talk about here, oh back to the flexi files. I used to use just one but uh, now I kind of use three. I use a medium grid, a fine grid, and an extra fine grid. And that way as I'm progressing through my sanding steps, I don't have to change tapes. So that's a little bit of an, a little bit of an expensive thing to do. Um, but you'll find that it, that it makes it worth your while. Next thing I want to talk about is uh, sanding sticks. And um, these are put out by several companies. Squadron uh, sells them for about a buck and a half to two bucks each. Um, Stevens International sells them. And I uh, mostly use the medium fine and extra fine in the same manner as the flexi files. And as the abrasive gets um, gets worn off, I'll generally you know, cut cut the edges off like so, so that I have access to the fresh abrasive. And this allows you, uh, the sanding stick allows you to get into tight places, you know, like so. And you wouldn't be able to get in here with a flexi file, but with a sanding stick, you're going to be able to do that. Again, just another way to to get stuff sanded. Um, these are also sanding sticks. It's just that they're they're smaller, and they come in varying abrasives as well. And uh, they're you know the same thing as the uh, as the big ones, just that uh, they allow you to to get into tighter tighter spots. And the last thing I want to talk about is this little item. Um, this is put out recently by Alpha Abrasives, the same people that put out uh, some sanding sticks and also the Flexi File. Um, the idea behind this is you have a adhesive uh, backed uh, cushioned uh, sandpaper pad on a little rubber block mechanism. And uh, I use this. This works actually quite good, better than I thought it would work, until I got it wet. Once I started working with it wet, uh, water got between the adhesive and it didn't last uh, much longer uh, after that. Certainly not as long as the, as the sandpaper was lasting. So then the next step, uh, once that happened, I wasn't going to throw it away. The next step is I just use the actual pad itself, like so, and this actually works pretty good, um, just in itself sanding. So, again, a nice idea, um, and it'll work if you keep it dry. But if you if you dry if you sand wet, which is the norm, then this is not gonna gonna hold up for you. So different options to use, and um, combination of these things, and of course uh, your files to start off. You know, pretty much most sanding products, uh, projects with, will pretty much get you where you need to get.